By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I've got a pretty cool game for you because I'm playing against one of my favorite players, Wouter. And Wouter, he is a real Timmy. And I mean that in a positive, most positive sense possible. He loves to brew new decks and try to find out new synergies. Um, and today he is playing with a Thicket Basilisk deck. So that's one of those classic creatures in old school magic. I always loved that creature as a kid. Um, and I'm playing with my mono blue Timmy deck with some new tweaks and some new changes. It's my, it's my constant on the move deck, I guess. Um, so before we go to the actual games, as usual, I will have a little deck deck. I have deck pictures of both of these decks. So if you're interested, stick around. Um, you can also check the description below and there you will find a timestamp and the timestamp will take you directly to the games themselves. So if you want to skip the deck tech, no worries. Click on the description below on the timestamp. And here we are going to continue with the deck tech. And I guess I'm going to start with my own deck. So we're first going to look at my mono blue Timmy brew. And here we see the deck that I'm playing with today. So this is Timmy's spellbook. So it's pretty much a blue control deck. Um, you know, you see uh, three maze of ifs to kind of get my keep my opponents at bay. I'm playing with three icy manipulators, uh, playing with four Timmy. So obviously, when you have protocol sorcerers on the board, what you want to do is, you know, you want to control the board and then at the end of turn, simply ping your opponent and slowly ping him to death. So that's one of the tactics in this deck. But I also have quite some beef in this deck. I've got three air elementals. I've got a Vesuvian double ganger. I've got a Mahamoti Jin. I can also clone them because I've got clones. So I can clone my pirate ship or my protocol sorcerers to just deal more uh, a ping damage. But I can also say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a left here. I'm going to go really... Um, I'm just going to go on the beefy big creatures and I'm going to kill my opponent with combat damage. So it has those options built in into this deck. I'm also playing with two control magics. Uh, copy artifacts can be very useful. That Sage of Latinam, man, it has done wonders. There is one change um, with the deck that I'm playing with in this particular game compared to this list because um, in the list that I'm playing with today, I'm playing with two clones and I'm playing with a super cool creature, the Time Elemental. And it was actually a magic friend of mine, Bjorn, who's a big fan of Time Elemental, who said, you know what? Maybe Time Elemental works in your build. So uh, Bjorn, I'm going to try it out in this match. I'm really curious to see how it's going to hold up against Wouter. Okay, so this is my deck. Let's take a look at my opponents. And here we see the deck of my opponent today. Um, his name is Wouter and he's a good magic friend of mine. And he's one of my favorite opponents to play against because he is playing with lists like this. He's playing with fun decks. It's just it's always interesting to play against Wouter's Brews. And uh, this time you can see uh, the creature base is kind of interesting. Four Thicket Basilisks, four Cockatrice and four Rook Eggs. Now let's just start with the Rook Eggs. Uh, we see them being used a lot with Neverneural's Disc. We don't see a Neverneural's Disc in this deck, so that's already quite interesting. Obviously, we see the synergy with the two Earthquakes. Uh, so Earthquake and Rook Egg, obviously, is a great combination. Rook Egg is also just a great card to block any ground threats of your opponent. We also see some Lightning Bolts, so he can choose to bolt his own eggs. Um, interesting is that not too long ago, um, somebody posted under one of my Rook Egg decks the suggestion to play with Chain Lightning instead of Lightning Bolt. And I think that's a very good suggestion. Obviously, Chain Lightning is a sorcery, but the cool thing is of Chain Lightning, you can Chain Lightning your own Rook Egg, then you can pay two red to choose a new target because you're first targeting something that you control. So you can, ideally, you can uh, Chain Lightning your Egg. At the end of turn, you'll get a 4-4 uh, Bird. And then in the meanwhile, you can pay two more red and you can deal three damage to your opponent, to a creature of your opponent. Or if you have another egg, you can even kill another egg and then pay two red and do the whole thing over again. So that idea of chain lightning is just very tempting. Obviously, the big problem for me with chain is that it's, it is a sorcery. But maybe, hey, maybe just play two. Pay, pay, play and lightning bolt and play chain lightning. For this deck, though, I don't think... Uh, that's a good idea. You probably have to choose between Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning. And since the Rook Egg is not the main character in this deck, I understand uh, the choice for Lightning Bolt. Uh, looking at the at the main characters of this deck, then of course the main characters are the Cockatrice and the Thicket Basilisk. And I think especially the Thicket Basilisk because there's a really interesting combo going on here. Many people make the mistake by saying, you know, Cockatrice and Thicket, they have Death Touch. 
they do not have death touch what they have is better than death touch because with death touch you have to deal damage to the creature in order to to activate your death touch and kill the creature with cockatrice and thicket's ability they only need to be assigned as the blocker or being blocked by a specific creature and this is where it gets interesting uh, obviously you have the lure combo so you put a lure on your thicket basilisk you attack with the thicket and your opponent has to block with all the creatures that he or she has right so all your creatures are going to die but hey the thicket basilisk is most likely going to die as well because it's going to receive a ton of damage from all those creatures of your opponent and here's when it gets interesting according to the new rules you can use your maze of if before damage is being dealt in combat step so blockers are assigned but damage has not yet been dealt and then you can tap your maze and get your thicket basilisk out of combat now because thicket basilisk has this unique ability that is not death touch it doesn't have to damage the opponent it, it kills any creature that's being assigned as a blocker so you use your mace you get your thicket out of combat and all the creatures of your opponent dies uh, die i should say now this is a little bit controversial because some old school magicers say this is not how the game was was intended what I think is important is that before you start playing a game, and this counts for any uh, format of magic that you play, is that obviously you discuss, okay, what rule set are we going to play? In this case, we're playing Swedish with Ravana reprint policies. Um, so in this case, it's fine. It's just part of the game. It's something you have to think of. You know, Maze of If used to be restricted. It's now unrestricted. So I'm not saying, you know, one rule is better than the other. It's just important to first discuss uh, beforehand what rule set are we going to uh, apply for this particular game and what does that actually mean um, really looking forward to see how this will do and if this is actually going to work of course the problem in I could I guess you could say modern old school magic is that all those combat tricks they're not as valuable because combat is not as important anymore as it used to be that being said the recent tournaments um, that I've seen, combat was all back. So that was really, really great to see. Combat um, is getting a bigger role again in, in old school magic. And I'm happy about it because I think combat is, is a very interesting and entertaining and fun uh, step. And, and it's, it's a step in, in the, magic, the magic phases where you can kind of show your quality as a player with, with the decisions that you make. So I'm really, really happy that people are playing more creatures and that players are trying to win games with old-fashioned combat damage. Okay, so that's that's enough of me rambling. Let's quickly um, go to the games. And I mean, just, just before we go to the games, let me mention one thing. I'm playing with three Maze of Ifs. Wouter is playing with four Maze of Ifs. So we're playing with seven Maze of Ifs. I'm playing with three Ices. He's playing with two Ices. I mean, these games potentially could drag on forever. So get, get a drink, make sure you've got like an hour. Uh, and let's go to the games. Game number one, and uh, Wouter is on the player. Look at that start there. Basic Mountain into a Soul Rings. That's a good start for Wouter. Let's see what I can do here. Mishra's Factory, Mox, Sapphire, tapping both. Wow, what a cool start. Time Elemental. We talked about Time Elemental a little bit during the deck deck, so it's a new card. Uh, really sweet to see it hit the board so early. Obviously, I do need uh, another blue mana in order to start using the Time Elemental, but this could be... Such an annoying card for Wouter. Uh, playing an Untamed Wilds here is going to look for a basic land. What's interesting about Untamed Wilds is that the basic land comes into play untapped. I sometimes forget that. So, I mean, it costs three to cast, but you do get a, a land back in return. So, an untapped mana source. So, he still has two open. Oh, actually, he's changing his mind. Okay, he's going for a, a basic forest instead. Perhaps he has a Thicket Basilisk or Cockatrice already in hand. Uh, and wants to play them uh, obviously not this turn only having two mana left let's see if he's going to do something maybe a bolt on the elemental was kind of expecting that it's not coming so that's a good thing and look at that i can now start using my time elemental am i going to do it though because i also want to keep my counter magic open obviously it's it's a nice thing to do at the end step bouncing something back to his hand let's see what's going to happen first Wouter finding a strip mine Taking care of an island in response, tapping it for blue mana. Then he's probably going to go to combat since it's going to be drawn out of my pool. So he's kind of forcing me to use it. Um, and I guess I can send back a land because he's already had his land drop for turn. So that's interesting because then he cannot 
play it out. But of course, he can tap it as well for mana. So it looks like Vouter's a little bit in the tank. So he's tapping it for mana and then taking it back. So he's playing a Thicket Basilisk here. Let's see if I can find a second blue. Okay, found a second blue so I can start bouncing back to Thicket. And he's attacking here, taking two, going to 18, playing that mountain again that I just bounced back, tapping, playing a Rook Egg, but I play a Counterspell again. Actually, not again. It's the first Counterspell of the game. Um, countering the Rook Egg. I really don't want to see that Rook Egg hit the board. And it looks like I'm going to pass turn. And here you can see kind of the, the, the trouble with a time elemental. Um, it's it's costs a lot of mana to actually activate. Attacking him for two here. Uh, of course, he does could have a crumble in hand possibly, but I'm pretty much focused on a tapped mountain. That means that he cannot play a lightning bolt on my factory, and I'm taking the risk here. And uh, there we see a maze of if. Now, of course, it's something that I can bounce again with the time elemental. And there we see a regrowth, no counter spell, taking back his rook egg. Of course, he's already tapped his red source, so he cannot play it out. Attacking, taking the damage, going to 16, and he's untapping it at the end of turn. And now the question is, what am I going to ping? I choose to, uh, or return, I should say, not ping, but bounce. I'm bouncing the Thicket Basilisk back to Wouter's hand. Interesting game so far, where you kind of see two control decks trying to do their thing. Um, and there's a city in a bottle. And this is, of course, ideal against that Rook Egg that he just picked up. And it looks like I'm tapping some more land. Wow. Tapping everything here except for one island. So I can't counter. But then again, I've played city in a bottle. So that means that Wouter cannot play his egg at the moment. He first needs to take care of that city in a bottle. So can he find a Shatter or a Crumble? Um, he's playing a Thicket Basilisk. I can tap his th Thicket instead. I'm tapping his Maze End Step. And now I could bounce, of course, his Thicket. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to attack with two. But you can really see how mana hungry my deck is. I'm actually not doing it. Instead, playing a Sage of Latinam. I think that's a good choice because in case Wouter will try to destroy uh, my Sadie in the bottle or my IC, at least I can use my Sage of Latinam to sack it in response and draw a card from that. And again, he's redeploying his thicket. So I'm tapping one of his maces. Look at that, two maces already on the board on his side. Sending back the thicket. And that means I'll have to use my IC just to deal two damage. And I'm attacking. So I only got one card in hand. And obviously I'm saying to Wouter, listen up Wouter, this one card is just not my, my counter spell. On the other hand, maybe I'm just not that afraid of, of countering anything because I have that active time elemental. Let's see, can he find, yeah, a bolt probably on the time elemental. Yeah, there you go. It makes sense. It was fun while it lasted. It's, it's a very cool card to see in the game. Let me know what you think of Time Elemental. I do think that the cost of two blue and two to activate is a little bit steep. Um, I mean, you do need you do need a lot of mana in your deck. Uh, tapping five here, there's an Air Elemental. That's pretty cool. And passing turn. Now, obviously, I've got the problem that I am facing two Maze of Ifs. So this is really difficult to... to push through. What I really need is some protocol sources to deal some pings. And there's a cockatrice. That's a great answer um, to my thicket. I'm not tapping his thicket. That's interesting. Just taking the two damage. Instead, I'm tapping the cockatrice. It looks like I really want to deal damage, but I'm not sure if that's the best tactic, but we'll see because what I can do now is tap down his, his last maze and deal four. Activate it. Why am I attacking here? This is weird. I'm not quite sure why I'm attacking with the factory. And okay, I'm not sure why I did that. I guess it was just a mistake. Maybe I thought the Thicket Basilisk was still tapped. At least I have my Sage of Latinam in response to then draw a card. 
That was a very weird play from my side. Uh, playing a Timmy, the 1-1 one, one pinger. Uh, and I guess I'm passing Turney, but that was kind of a weird play from my side. And the problem is, okay, I've dealt four damage to Wouter, but I'm also completely open now. He can deal four damage to me. I mean, which is not a huge problem going to 10, but it, it's, I don't think it's the best play to go aggressive. I mean, I've got control on the board. What am I afraid of? And look at that, another Cockatrice. No Counterspell. Remember, I do play with two Control Magics, so maybe I can find some Control Magics. Attack here for two. Have to take that probably, going to 12. Interesting to see here that Wouter is not attacking with his other Cockatrice, so he's also trying to protect his life total here. And I think I just need to go on full control mode here, playing another mace. I mean, I've got a pinger. It's going to take forever, but, you know, it is something at least. And, you know, Wouter's got two mazes. I've got a maze. I've got an IC. It's really difficult for both players to get through this. And I do think that one of the thing of cards that, of course, Wouter has that can help him is the Earthquake. Then he can get rid of a few creatures here. And deal some damage at the same time. Obviously, Earthquake also deals damage to yourself. There is the Earthquake. Okay. So, it looks like he's playing an Earthquake. Oh, interesting. I'm sacking my city in the bottle. I'm not sure if that's the right decision here. And um, also interesting, he's only dealing one damage with the Earthquake. And yeah, that's exactly what we're discussing now is, hey, wait a minute. The Sage of Latinum is actually a 1-2. You would think it's a 1-1 one, one creature. But it's actually a 1-2 creature. Anyway, we've corrected the mistake here, each taking an extra point of damage. Um, it looks like I'm not very, very much afraid of the Rook Egg because I don't have any offensive uh, intentions. And look at him attacking now with both. And I'm sending one back and I'm taking two damage. Interesting again to see that I'm not using my Icy Manipulator. I'm, instead, I'm using an end step, but I'm not quite sure what my idea is because I'm facing two maze of ifs. And look at this interesting. I had my second city in a bottle. I'm playing two city in a bottle main in this deck. I had my second second city in my hand, and that's probably why I decided um, to use the Sage of Latinam because I had that other city in my hand. Now, obviously. The thing is, uh, or the interesting thing here is that City in the Bottle actually works with Rook Egg. When Rook Egg is on, is in the game already and City in the Bottle is being played and Rook Egg has to be discarded. Uh, but that does mean that my opponent, in this case Wouter, um, gets the 4-4 Bird token because the 4-4 Bird token is a token and is not affected by the City in a Bottle. So that's very interesting maybe for, for people to know. Um, and I'm taking two more damage it looks like sending back the thicket and tapping one of his cockatrice. So I'm on six. And playing a chaos orb here. And it looks like I'm going to flip. The question is on what am I going to flip? Let's first see if it uh, hits the target. Bam! And it's a good, nice quality flip. If I say so myself, that is a hit. I guess it was on a cockatrice. So cockatrice gone. And let's see what else I can do. We're still kind of stuck. I mean, just look at the board state still. We've got Icy Manipulator, Mesa Vip on my side of the board. And on Wouter's side of the board, we've got the Thick and Cockatrice. But of course, those three Mesa of Ifs. Again, here playing an Untamed Wild. And uh, I mean, the land is nice, but the shuffle effect in this case is much more important because he has that Sylvan. So that means that next turn, he can look at three fresh new cards with his Sylvan. Of course, he is on nine, so I don't think he's going to really draw extra cards that quickly. He has to think, um, he has to take care of his life total. I mean, I'm on six. He's playing with red, two bolts, and I'm dead. Um, tapping down his cockatrice, sending back the thicket. I'm tapping here. Let's see what I can find. Tapping two, tapping four here. Playing control magic. <clears throat> and playing control magic over his cockatrice. Now the cockatrice obviously comes into play on my side tap because it was tapped on the side of Wouter. 
Um, but okay, that's that's a little change. That means another attacker on there, and there is a lure that's not going to be all that important as long as I keep my icy open to tap his thicket uh, when he declares attackers. So tapping it down, just to clarify for people who are wondering how that actually works, uh, what you need to do is, um, as, a, as the active player, you need to say, I'm going into com I want to go into combat, is there something you want to do? And then I can respond by tapping down his creature. If I don't, and he's already in combat, I can no longer tap his creature down. Um, and there we see Pink 5, Brain Geyser. Ooh, maybe that can catapult me ahead in this game. I still feel very vulnerable with just six life. Not sure why I'm looking at my mace at the moment. Maybe we're discussing something else. Maybe I'm thinking about tapping more mana. The thing is, I want to keep two blue open for a counter spell, and I want to keep that mox open that's under my icy manipulator simply to tap down the thicket. If I cannot tap down the thicket basilisk and he manages to get an attack in, I lose both of my creatures. So I don't want that to happen, obviously. Playing another island, three islands on the board now that end up Mox Sapphire having four mana sources. And I'm a little bit into tank here. I mean, th th it doesn't surprise me that we're kind of ending up here in this first game. Because if you looked at both of the deck lists, you're seeing tons of Mace of Ifs. You're seeing Icy Manipulators on both sides. You know, so it, it doesn't surprise me. I was hoping personally that maybe I could create some kind of ping army because then the mazes of if don't really matter. So if I can get pirate ships out, um, if I can get uh, protocol sorcerers out, and I could just tim my, uh, ping my opponent to death. But alas, um, they're not really sticking on the board. I think I lost one Timmy and the other Timmy is, is... A lot of Timmies actually are still in the library. So we'll see what's going to happen because the game is far from over. And let's see, I think I've passed turn. Yeah, I've passed turn here. We can see Wouter drawing, looking at his first three because of the Sylvan drawing one. So his life total remains a nine. Finding a Shatter here. Ooh, but a counter spell, very important one. And tapping down his thicket. Actually not, ta okay, so he's probably didn't declare attack. That's interesting. So I tapped down one of his mazes, so. I still think it's not a good thing because I can tap down another maze and attack, but then he has that thicket possibility and he can just wipe all my creatures away. Uh, playing a Prodigal Sorcerer now, so finding a Timmy, he is on eight, or nine, sorry, so nine turns away from death, I guess. <clears throat> but of course, he can try to look for some more creature removal. Look at that maze of if number four. So if I had an <laughs> illusion of getting through his first three, he now has a full play set of Maze of Ifs on the board, so I might as well just ignore that, that whole strategy. And there's another, wow, another Icy. And that actually, that is making it very difficult for Wouter. Um, passing turn here. So what you kind of see is I'm able to expand my board, also thanks to that Brain Geyser, and Wouter is not really able to, to do the same. Okay, now here is finding a Cockatrice. Um, is there a counter spell? No, there's not. There's just a double tap and a ping. So that means Wouter's going to eight. And I'm taking turn here. Um, let's see what I can do. I mean, four maze of ifs. Let me know what you think, by the way, in the comments below about the uh, the unrestricting unrestric of maze of if. Is, is, it, is it a card that you often play more than one off in your deck? And, uh, and do you feel that it should be restricted again, or do you think it's fine the way it is? And again, end of turn here, tapping his creatures, pinging for damage, going to seven. And this is actually kind of what I want to accomplish. Another Icy Manipulator. Wow. Wow, sorry, Wouter. I know how incredibly annoying it is to play against these Icy's. That's probably the reason why I enjoy playing with it so much. Uh, tapping down, a maze, stepping down. And that means that next turn I can kill him, I think, because I can tap down his three maze of ifs. I can swing in here. Wow, look at that. And dealing eight damage. I don't think there's anything that Wouter can do. Or, nope, nope, picking up his cards. 
That's it. So that means I've won this first game and wow, showing a copy artifact. I could have actually copied my 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 uh, my IC manipulator having a full playset on the board. And that's just complete utter nonsense. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So um, first game won, but, but we have a whole match to decide still. Uh, let's go into our sideboards and we'll catch up with you in game number two. Game number two. So I guess it's Wouter on the play. Look at that. Taiga turn one passing turn here. And now uh, let's see. He needs to win this game to stay in the match. Uh, starting with a basic island passing turn. So both of these decks are not particularly uh, quick. But there are a lot of control elements as we could see in that first game. And there's a Sylvan Library again. So that is a bit of a problem for me. At least I've got two counter spell, or I've got two blue open now to counter spell. And he's just drawing one card, and let's see what else he can do. And there is a basic forest. Tapping for three, of course, the Untamed Wilds. That means that next turn he can hit five and he can start playing Cockatrice and the Basilisk. So that will be interesting. Quick shuffle, chosen to look up a basic mountain and pass turn. And there is a Mistress Factory. Probably not going to do anything with it. No, just wanting to keep that counter option open. And there's another basic mountain. So five lands so far. Will we see a five drop? And at least he's going to play a Soul Ring first. Probably the card he just picked up. Tapping four, and there's a Rook Egg. And there is a Counter Spell. So, so far, I'm really good in Counter Spelling these Rook Eggs. And he is tapped out, so I can kind of have a free swing here. That's exactly what I'm doing. He's dropping to 18 and passing turn. You look, he's looking at the top three cards again. For me, you know, I really want to deal damage when the Sylvans is uh, is in play because life equals an extra card. We can see that right now, uh, Valter deciding to draw an extra card, dropping to 14. So I want to get his life total low as fast as possible so that it's going to be harder and harder for him to activate that Sylvan. But let's see what he can do. He's got eight mana to its to his disposal but actually doing nothing passing turn here so maybe he's just finding finding lance and that's all or maybe there's another reason that he's not playing anything out perhaps he has some removal in his hand and uh, let's see there's a chaos orb again a chaos orb we saw that in the first game as well and you know chaos orb is one of my only ways to get rid of an enchantment so i wonder if i'm going to use it against the sylvan or if i want to try a different approach here it looks like i'm going to leave the sylvan alone and wow Wouter is just passing turn so i really wonder what's in his hand it cannot be anything useful Even with the Sylvan, he's not really finding anything he needs. It looks like I'm thinking about activating the orb on the Sylvan. But I'm deciding not to. Asking about the amount of cards in hand. Taking the risk with the factory. That's probably why I'm asking. Doesn't seem to have a bolt or anything to take care of the um, of the factory. I think a crumble is really nice to, to play on a factory as well. And there is a regrowth. And he's going to take back the Rook Egg. Is he going to play it as well? And yes, he's going to play it. But there is a blue Elemental Blast and a red Elemental Blast and a Counter Spell. Wow, talking about Counter Wars here. And that is unfortunate for, for Wouter. On the other hand, I think, you know, I could have also let him um, create a 4-4 bird and then use the blue Elemental Blast to destroy that token but okay why not once you've decided to counter it you kind of have to go for it and have to defend your first blue elemental blast and uh, unfortunate here for Wouter because he doesn't seem to really be be getting anything activation of the chaos orb now and I'm choosing the sylvan obviously as the target here so let's see if I can hit it 
there we go. And another hit, not as nice as the first one though, but hey, it's a hit, that's what counts. And that's bye bye for the Sylvan. And you know, I think this is always difficult with the Sylvan library in play because probably the first two cards on Wouter's library are going to be useless cards for him. Um, and there again is the time elemental. And we see a red elemental blast on the time elemental. And there you go, you see it's, he's just top decking a basic land because he put that under with his Sylvan Library. Attacking again, going to six. And I must say my factory is doing a lot of work. I mean, he's on six, just attacking. And I mean, I haven't seen a single creature, well, except for the Rook Egg from Wouter. So he's just being very, very unlucky, finding a ton of land in this game. Not really able to show what his deck can do in this second game. And there's finally a Lightning Bolt and tapping three, finding a Timmy. So can I ping him to death? Let's see, and can Wouter do something? He's still on four. I only have a Protocol Sorcerer. So, I mean, he just needs to find a creature. Tapping four, a clone on the Timmy. This is a risky play because if Wouter would have had a Lightning Bolt, then my clone would have fizzled. Putting him on three now on his end step. And let's see what I can do. Playing another clone. So having three Timmies on the battlefield and he's on three life. Passing turn here and that's it, that's game. Ay, 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 Shatter Storms in hand. Very useful card, but not, not in this particular game. I'm showing him my control magic as well. I and it's just, you know, if you keep drawing land, there's not much you can do and Shatterstorm is great but just to find two of them and I'm sure he only boarded two in here we can actually see what he probably boarded in there so very unlucky for this second game but uh, what a fun deck and what a fun concept to build around I'm um, looking forward actually about her to maybe uh, play this deck again and see if you're a little bit more lucky maybe you've made I actually know that you've made some changes because you've told me that you replaced the Untamed Wilds um, with, uh, let me think, uh, with ice storms. So you are going more into that direction. I, I really understand why. I do really like the synergy with Sylvan Library and Untamed Wilds, but there's a reason that it doesn't see as much play as the ice storm, because there are just so many special lands and old school magic that you want to get rid of. Um, so it is an understandable decision to make a change. And I think you've made a few other tweaks. Maybe if you watch this movie, you can let us know in the comments below and let us know how the deck is doing with those tweaks. Um, I would like to thank you for viewing another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, if you want to support the channel, leave a like, leave uh, a comment. You can subscribe, share this video and other videos of Timmy Talks on your socials if you want to of course but that really helps the channel grow as well click that notification bell because youtube thinks it's super important and you can also support timmy talks financially by becoming a patron so you can check out our patreon page there's an info card popping up right now click on the card that will take you to the timmy talks patreon page where you can see what that's all about and talking about patreon let's go to the end scroll let's have a look at the patrons of timmy talks what shall we do Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.